What's something that's always wrongly depicted in movies and TV shows? How absolutely loud gunfire is especially in enclosed spaces. Hero in a concrete stairwell, no hearing protection bang 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 then hears footsteps as someone sneaks up on them. You'd be deaf and ears ringing for a day after. Yeah, Linda Hamilton has hearing loss in one ear because she forgot to wear her plugs in a take of the elevator scene in Terminator 2. Defibrillators are always hilarious, because that is never how they work, ever. You don't shock a systole. Well if shocking it doesn't work you can always just pound on their chest and yell live damn you. Live. Works every time. Romantic relationships. Bonus points for them throwing around the love word after a week of knowing each other. Extra bonus points for Gerard Butler getting the girl despite being a total dick the entire time. After reading the comments, I'm convinced there is enough good material in here for decent comedy where realism continually gets in the way of the story. This is niche. And by niche I mean the nichest of niche. But anyway, in almost every film or television show depicting military combat in the 18th century, think the American Revolution or the Seven Years' War, the soldiers wear their cocked hats, tricorn hats, facing forward. In reality the hats were worn at an angle because if you had to turn your head while shouldering your rifle or musket, it would end up hitting your head where out of place had they been worn facing forward. I love reading facts like this. It always bothers me how long people look over at their passenger when driving. Keep your eyes on the road. Or have long conversations with plenty of eye contact while driving at highway speeds. I've got a Pavlovian expectation that every shot of a character making meaningful eye contact while driving ends with a surprise T-bone and the main character waking up in the hospital. But Autism Usually depicted as mental superpowers with heightened social awkwardness. Either that or they depict a background character that just sits and rocks. They're a background character because they're also depicted with no communication ability whatsoever. This was proven wrong years ago. Opening presents. The boxes almost always have a top that lifts right off rather than being wrapped like a gift. Yeah, the props department doesn't want to have to rewrap it between every take. That the only thing to worry about in space movies is if a planet has oxygen or not. And if they do, gravity is always right around tilde 1 gram. And the natives speak English. The speed at which police forensics can take place. They solve things in minutes that really take days or weeks or months. Enhance. Lock picking is usually laughably wrong. No one ever applies tension or uses the right tools. In the next lock picking movie scene, and then we're going to get the pick that Bosnian Bill and I made and inserted to tension off of disc number one. Knocking out someone with some rag and chloroform. Knocking out in general. Whether it's choking somebody or during fight scenes, if somebody is actually unconscious for longer than a minute, they probably have brain damage. Let alone the hours people are unconscious in movies and wake up tied up and be completely lucid 10 seconds later. I always find it very funny when the hero has a no-killing policy and then proceeds to inflict serious head trauma on every goon they encounter. Like, just because you don't stab them trough the heart or something doesn't mean that person will live. Cars. Period movies are the worst. Oh this movie takes place in 1953. Let's go find 100 vehicle owners with pristine 1953 cars and use them in the movie. In 1953 the majority of cars were not 53s and not all of them were clean and perfect. There were dented cars dirty car even old dented dirty cars. Don't even get me started on almost any racing movie. Outside of Death Race 2000 they're all garbage. Also anytime there's a car stunt that's supposed to be happening like during a car chase and you can see the marks on the road from the first 16 takes they did. Same with the 80s. Not all cars in the 80s were from the 80s. Our piece of crap was from the late 60s from memory. Yep. I remember all of our cars in the early 90s were from the late 70s or early 80s. Sure there were fancy new ones around, but a new car was a big deal. Just look around now, 
not every car is from 2020s, I regularly see piles of crap from 20 plus years ago just driving around. The way that apparently crime labs solve crimes with DNA tests and unlimited access to every camera in every building in the city. Enhance. Enhance more. There it is. Can you focus on the car behind the corner? Hacking. I always laugh at the keyboard mashing. I think NCIS was the worst offender for that. One episode had two people using the same keyboard. I'm sorry, what? Yes it did, and then the hacking was solved by Gibbs wandering behind slowly, and pulling out a single kettle cord, unplugging one monitor. I once read a fun deep dive into that scene in the op talked about how NCIS targets an older demographic who don't understand computers. So the computer youngsters tries their hacking to solve the problem. But a logic-driven, smart, older man just unplugs the computer and solves the problem. Something the youngsters would never do because their eyes are glued to screen at all times. I have no idea if this holds any water, I have watched very little NCIS, but I think it's a fun theory. High school parties Anything to do with forensics and autopsies. Medical examiners' offices are incredibly poorly funded. They do not have access to 1% of the technology shown on TV, and in fact, a lot of what is shown just doesn't exist. Oh yeah his organs are full of carbon monoxide and his rib cage is smashed in says the autopsy guy without even cutting open the body. Spare time. When do these people work and where does the money come from? Friends had a funny moment, I believe it was friends anyway, where they were all complaining about their jobs and one of them said, something along the lines of, well, not that strange you're getting nowhere. Considering you're lounging in a cafe on a Tuesday. The lyrics to the Friends theme even say, You're still in bed at 10 and work began at 8. Yellow tint when there is a scene in Mexico. I went to Mexico and can confirm your vision turns yellow. Outrunning explosions, apparently you only have to worry about the flame and the concussive impact is really minimal. There is also never shrapnel. Most explosion deaths that are not directly in the explosive radius come from propelled shrapnel. Endgame was awful on this. Every Avenger is dead after the gunship attack on the building. Legs, arms, heads. Gone. Nothing but disfigured limbs all around. Most of those guys didn't even have super resistance, they were just human with a side of superpowers. Playing instruments. They hold them upside down, on the wrong side. Hands aren't even close to being on the right keys slash holes. Horrific fake bowing on strings, and terrible fake guitar strumming. Being able to learn an instrument instantly, etc. Came here to say this. The worst offenders are pianists and violinists. There is a pretty good share of bad flutists. Most common mistake is when playing on TV it is shown with the right hand completely backwards. People who pop out of a sewer system in the middle of the street by easily pushing aside the manhole cover. Those damn things are heavy. That's why it makes sense only when Spider-Man does it because he's stupidly strong. Fun fact about Spider-Man that has nothing to do with the topic, but I'm gonna share it anyway, Spider-Man is so strong that he actually pulls his punches when fighting villains and criminals to not kill them. It was revealed in one of the newer comics after Doc Ock swapped bodies with him and basically destroyed Scorpion's face with a normal punch. It left him terrified because he realized that Spider-Man could have killed him at any time if he ever wanted to. Breakfast Why does almost every movie or show have someone make this big breakfast, for the others to take one to two bites and leave? The Instant Death Neck Crack But that's Steven Seagal's signature move. Are you telling me he is untrustworthy? He's been working with Nex for like 85 years. Fighting Especially knife fighting. Nobody wins in a knife fight, it's gonna get nasty and both parties are likely to end up with slashes and punctures. I saw something recently where a girl's body was discovered with 90-something defensive wounds. Imagine both parties had a knife. It was tragic for her. But the killer could have received some nasty wounds too if she was also slashing. In a knife fight, the loser dies on the spot and the winner dies in the ambulance. 
Over and out. It's a common issue that drives me nuts due to it being relevant to my job. I work in Coast Guard radio monitoring and communications with mariners. Over means I am done speaking, and am now awaiting your response. An example is sailing vessel Sunny Day, this is the Coast Guard, over. Out means I have completed our conversation. There will be no further broadcasts from me. An example is Roger that Sunny Day. You are not in distress. Coast Guard standing by on Channel 16. Out. Over and out makes no freaking sense, yet it's in everything. Radio shows. Commercials. Cartoons. Movies. Books. Yes this annoys me so much as well. The easy way to remember that I got taught was, over, over to you to respond out, out of this conversation with you. Some people should say over when using the telephone. Childbirth. A lot of times, the water doesn't break on its own. And labor and delivery take more than a frantic 30 minutes. My firstborn took about 48 hours to finally come out. My wife fell asleep between contractions a few times. The medieval era. Specifically their castles and foods. Peasants only really ate grayaki gruel in times of hardships. Otherwise a peasant's diet usually consisted of, fish, cheese, milk, curds. A favorite dish for any class was pottage. A type of stew that usually had meat or vegetables. They also liked barely dottas for their castles. Most were not dark and dank like we think they are. Many were brightly decorated with beautiful colors. Wall murals and tapestries. Even their clothing was colorful. Dirt age bothers me most, because it's become this cliché about realism when actual early color movies about medieval period were much more accurate with how garish everything was. And it's not just medieval times, the Vikings loved color, the Celts loved color. The fact that movies think that all these places were nothing but grime and dark gray scale says a lot. Only time I find that I'm okay with it is if the movie is satirical. Hacking Computers are basically the new deus ex machina. About 10 minutes before the show's over, the resident nerd will say something like I cross-referenced the license plate with the average rainfall in each region, and compared that with the average number of clown shoes sold per capita in nearby American cities, so the killer is probably in this three-block radius. Then, there's a car chase. An individual person can't do that. But tons of people on the internet working together can track down the exact coordinates of a blurry weather balloon seen in the background of a video. No one ever has to hunt for a parking space, they always park right up in front of the building. Teenagers Teenagers are always shown as shorter than their parents. Holy shit I've never noticed or thought about that. I was taller than my mom by the time I was 14 without a doubt. Cars don't actually blow up. They might catch fire or smoke, but they won't ever make a huge explosion. I was in a car accident with my BFF and her brother when I was 13. Somebody said the car was gonna blow so I tried to crane my neck to see thinking it would be like on TV. There was only a loud pop and a ton of black smoke and that was it. Super bummed. The sound usually used for an eagle call in movies is actually the call of a red-tailed hawk. Eagles just don't sound majestic enough, so they did the old switcheroo. Same thing with lions. The lion roars in Lion King were tigers. A lion's roar is still very impressive. Not sure why they did that. When their entire family or friend group dies, but they're absolutely fine after a minute or two and just move on. Luke was barely till defaced till defaced by his aunt and uncle burning to death. Nah, nah. It's cool. He's adopted the old desert hermit, he's got a cool laser sword and I just bet Ben will let him go to the Tosh station. <laughs> Cancer treatment. The person always has a completely bald head, no discoloration because that part of the head has almost never seen the sun, but still have their eyebrows, perfectly done, or else they have no eyebrows, again, perfectly shaved, and they always have their eyelashes. Chemo causes hair to fall out everywhere. But how many actors are going to let makeup get rid of their eyelashes? Drinking coffee. How can you F that up on film? They always have empty cups and it's so obvious from the way they carry the cups to the way they sip. This is the same reason folks avoid eating food in scenes, especially in more professional productions, they film the same scene so many times. 
That's why you see people raise a fork to their mouth and then put it down. They could just fill the cups with water. It's probably my biggest movie slash TV pet peeve. Wheat isn't acid. Honestly, even one hit of acid isn't like TV acid. Actors using video game controllers. A majority of the time it doesn't look anywhere close to how you'd actually use it. Not to mention the sounds coming from the TV sound like an Atari 2600. Court questioning, and police interrogations. I've never seen a deposition depicted realistically. Probably because real depositions are usually extremely boring. Irish people, Hollywood just sees us as Scotland light. Psych hospitals and mental illness in general. It's mostly boring. You talk to people. You do therapy and they get you stabilized on meds. Aw oh man. You're saying that I won't find true love during my next grippy sock hospital visit and then go to a vampire weekend concert after we both get out? Bummer. On average, it takes 8 to 10 minutes to fully strangle an adult to death. It's a very personal, brutal, and exhausting way to kill someone. A lot of media that I've seen depicts strangling to only take a couple of seconds and it always feels frustrating. I watched Promising Young Woman, hope it's been out long enough that spoilers are fine, recently and there was a scene in which a character was smothered to death with a pillow and it took an excruciatingly long amount of time. Not in the 8 to 10 minute range, maybe 1 to 2, but it was a single shot that felt like it took forever and was absolutely agonizing to watch. Beautiful. What an elementary classroom looks like. You mean the 12 kids per class? Politics. It's often depicted as a highly intelligent and calculated chess game and not unqualified idiots entering shouting matches. Women in fights with long hair not pulled back. The Earl explanation for this is that it makes it easier to have the stunt woman be less noticeable. An example of this is in Captain America. The Winter Soldier, in the street fight scene, any time Natasha's hair is in her face, it's the stunt woman. It's still annoying, though. Apparently the stunt doubles hate fights in dresses or short skirts too because they can't wear knee pads. You don't have to wait 24 hours to report someone missing. You watch them grab your son and put him in a van? When and where was this? Well, it was at today though. Sorry ma'am. You'll have to come back tomorrow. How to properly use a goddamn inhaler for asthma. Well, everyone knows that once you've defeated the bully, succeeded at your adventure, and kissed the pretty girl, you don't even need it anymore. Any relationship in a romantic comedy would be classified as stalking or harassment in the real world. Honey, I climbed on your roof to prove my love to you. WTF go away I'm calling the police. For more videos, like and subscribe.